creating a ping pong game with C++ with SFML. In this lesson, we're going to use Visual Studio 2019, import the SFML library, copy some C++ code, and make a ping pong game. We will start with a big picture and summary on the important steps, and then look into each step and eventually create this game. Okay, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to ALB programming lesson. Here's a little note on my screen on what is crucial to make this game happen. As I said, we'll use Visual Studio 2019 edition. If you're using this version, please make sure this workload is already installed or you won't be able to build any C++ application. What do I mean by that? If you still remember how you have installed Visual Studio 2019, you probably remember this Visual Studio installer. This thing, open it up, here we have to wait for it to load, alright, we have to update the installer as well, can't get away with it, we can't skip it, so be patient. Almost done. Well, again, we have to wait for things to load up. I know it's a little bit tedious just to make sure we can use C++, but we can get through it. Cool, we've got the screen. We need to click this More button and Modify. All right, again, we need to wait. I'll speed up the video. All right, fantastic. Finally, I've come to the screen I want to show you guys. Alright, in order to use C++, you must take this workload. It says Desktop Development with C++. Please check the checkbox if you haven't done it already. This is one of the most important things of the lesson. Alright, just in case you're curious about what else I already installed, I'll navigate through the installer. And let's see the components. I think it's all for our dependencies. Just make sure you have already installed the C workload. At this point, my Visual Studio is ready for the game development, except that I need to download, import, and configure the SFML library. Copy this download link and paste it into my browser address bar and go ahead. There you go. We're using this version in this lesson. Remember, version matters. It makes a big difference sometimes. Next, you might be thinking about downloading this version if you're using 64-bit operating system, but we're not using that. Whether you're using 32-bit or 64-bit. Instead, we'll be using this. Let's go ahead and download it. Almost finished. Great, download is completed. Let's keep things rolling and start importing the SFML library. So find out the downloaded file. Here is it. And unzip it. Here. Go ahead and find out this folder and move it to somewhere I can find easily. Because this path is a little bit harder to remember. So I'm gonna cut it and paste it under C drive. There you go. Very soon we're going to import or reference some files inside this lib folder and this include folder. They do most of the heavy lifting and complicated stuff we would love to avoid. 
This examples folder contains some source code that leverages the SFML engine to create different games. Okay, now it's time for the most fun part of the lesson. Let's turn on Visual Studio. Click this Create a New Project. And click this Empty Project so that we can start everything from the scratch. Hey, by the way, make sure you have selected the C++ here. Click Next. Here. The project name can be anything except for special characters. I'll leave it as default. The same with the location and solution name. I'll keep them as default as well and click create. It's gonna take a while. I'll speed up the video. Almost there. Alright. Alright. Eventually, we'll put the source code of the ping pong game under the source files directory by adding an existing file. But before all that, we need to import the SFML library. So, the first step is find out the project directory by selecting the solution and add the properties area, find out and select this path. Copy the path. And go to that path. The second step is to copy the source code of the ping pong game right here. From let's open up a new explorer window from the SFML folder we've just downloaded. Here in examples folder, in this pong folder, this is the source code we need to copy. We also need this resources folder, select them both, copy, back to the project path. It's not a root path by the way, it's one level down, paste the files here. Then go back to the Visual Studio. And we still need to add the source code to the Visual Studio project. Now we can do it by right clicking on the source files. Go to add and click the existing item. And let's double click the pong.cpp, which is a C++ code you can modify it well. Okay, now you can see the source code added here. And let's continue to set up the Visual Studio project so that the project can actually compile and run. So click this project and properties. Oops, doesn't look right. Before doing the project properties, let's select the project or solution from the solution explorer or any source code of the project. Then go to project and properties. Alright, these are the most important settings. The same settings apply even to the older version of the Visual Studio such as the 2008 edition or 2013 edition. The first setting can be found under the C slash C++ section. Then under general, there is a additional include directories in which we copy and paste the file path. Let's go to the SFML root directory. And go to include. This path is the one we need to copy. And here, let's paste the include file path. Well, it, actually, it's not enough. We're dealing with only one of the configurations here. Let's apply the changes to all configurations. Well, here we need the same value for all configurations. Enter and click apply. 
Alright, the second setting is under the linker, then under general. Please find out the property additional library directories. Similarly, we copy and paste the file path here. Let's go to the sfml roots directory. This one. Copy this path. Paste it here. Make sure to apply the property to all configurations. Then click apply. The third setting is under the input. Here, we need to add some additional settings. Click here to edit. And click this triangle. And click this edit. Here, we need to specify the names of the other files that the Visual Studio project depends on. You're welcome to type them one by one, but I'll give you a note anyway from which you can copy and paste some file names. Let's copy these file names back to the Visual Studio, paste them here. Just for your info, those file names are referring to these files, this file, this one, this one, yeah, this one, and etc. Back to the Visual Studio, feel free to click OK and apply. Alright, remember, we've applied the previous two settings to all configurations. But this setting is very different. The debug mode of the Visual Studio requires a completely different set of dependent libraries. Guys, this is very critical. This is very crucial. Get this right. Or you might end up crashing your computer and you can't even close the program. Pretty much like this. See? It's terrible, isn't it? Alright, I'm lucky this time, I finally closed the program. So, get them right, the dependent libraries. So, let's select the debug configuration and make some changes to the additional dependencies. Edit. For Visual Studio debug configuration, we cannot have that. And and copy this set of file names instead. Back to the Visual Studio and paste them here and click OK and click Apply. Now the additional dependencies properties are different for debug configuration and release configuration. It is very important and click OK. Now we are pretty much ready to compile, build and run this ping pong game. Let's go to build and rebuild solution. Here we can see everything is successful without error. So I can click this green run button. Looking good. Oops, something went wrong. It says this file is missing. At this point, I remember there is one last setting, which is to put some DLL files mentioned in the error message. Here in this path, let's put some DLL files here. So go to the root of the SFML folder here. Go to bin and copy whatever you need or I'll just copy everything for the simplicity of this tutorial. And paste. Let's run again the ping pong game. Looking good. Game is loading. Perfect. Let's play. 
Okay. Okay, exit the game. Alright, this is pretty much how the setup around the ping pong game in Visual Studio 2019. If you want to modify this game, you can work on the C++ code here. And the content pretty much looks like this. You can also find more SFML tutorials from, from this site. And here's the link where you can find out the notes I'm using right now. So next up, find out the necessary files that make the ping pong game portable or standalone, which you can launch straight from an exe file. That exe file, in fact, lives in the a debug folder at the root directory of the Visual Studio solution. Here's a debug folder. Go into it. These are the portable files. You can use them in other computer. And here is the executable file of the ping pong game. Let me repeat again. The path is here. Or something like this. Why don't we try running this game? Yep. Some files are missing. They're referring to those DLL files we've just copied. They live in this path, by the way. But we have to copy them again to the same directory as the executable file. Let's copy them. And paste them. Let's run the game again. It's not working. If we replay with a slow motion, Here's an error message that reads Fail to open file resources bold.wav. So let's copy the resources. Go up. Go into this project path. Copy this folder. Back to the debug folder. And paste. Now run the game again. Fantastic. I can play it. Mm, I've lost. Quit the game. Okay, the portable files of the game is in the debug folder in the root directory of the solution. There is actually another debug folder. That's a little bit confusing. It's here in the project folder. It's here, but there is no exe file here. It's in the other debug folder. This is what I want to clarify. That's it. Hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Peace.